So the plan for this hunt, we're going to New Mexico in the middle of nowhere. I cannot wait to shoot an elk with my gun. Well, there he is right there, don't move. We're lucky enough to have a place in New Mexico with Tri-State Outfitters to hunt elk that nobody else gets to hunt. Stephanie and I, or wildlifers, are the only people that get to hunt elk there. It's not easy, but somebody's got to do it. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I'm burning my candle at both ends. Gonna go to heaven, but I don't know when. Ashes to ashes, can I get a man? Burning. Elk hunting is my favorite hunt of the year. They're awesome animals, I love it. I can't wait every year to go on my elk hunt. It's a great place to hunt elk. There are some really super big bulls there, but it's also a very hard place to hunt. There's not a ton of elk there, but the ones that are there are super nice. This ranch that we hunt on, it looks like it's flat and then it'll just drop off and have these amazing deep canyons. We're just, I swear there's probably places on this ranch that have never actually even seen a human being footprint on them. They're just, it's beautiful. I don't think I'm gonna go in right here, you know, I'm gonna go all the ways. I'll just beat it from right here. I think they'd hear us. This is where that bull answered me the other day. Where we hunt elk on this ranch, it's, uh, it's not easy. They're very spread out. So we have to do a lot of traveling. We do a lot of driving around. We, you know, we move around a lot. We have to walk out on a lot of peaks and do a lot of bugling to see if we can find one to answer. If you, know, you say we're going elk hunting, and you know, I think everybody, including myself, at one time would think of you know, sheer cliffs with pine trees and pine needles all over the ground and perhaps snow. and. The ranch we hunt on there, it's rough, but it's more of a shallower canyons and more cedar country. I've known Bridger since he was 15 years old. Everything he does is absolutely as good as it gets. Now, I couldn't recommend anybody going hunting with anyone else other than Tri-State Outfitters for the species that he has available. Bridger is the go-to guy when it comes to that. I love the camaraderie between them too. They're they're literally like brothers that haven't seen each other for a couple years and when they, you know, catch up on a hunt, the camaraderie and the laughing and the joking between them two is is so funny. There's a big old tarantula right there. See that stuff? Oh yeah. Keep going, they're gonna wanna film it. Yeah, that's true. Yep, they're stopped. <laughs> they're stopped. I've always found it remarkable of how well Bridger can get around the properties that he has for Tri-State Outfitters because, you know, as an example, he's just speaking of three of the ranches. One of them is 280,000 acres, one of them is 385,000 acres, and the other one is 140,000 acres. And he can drive around each one of those like he grew up there and lived there his whole life. And it's absolutely remarkable how he knows his way around them. This ranch is not for the inpatient no. owner at all. We spent all day bugling, listening for elk, glassing, you know, didn't hear anything. Nothing was working. But tomorrow's a new day, I'm hopeful. And as long as the weather holds out, it could be good. See the rain cloud behind you? I did. I don't know where they're coming. Living the wildlife, I bet I sleep away from home more than I do in my own bed. I don't like alarm clocks and I don't like 6 a.m. We go and we go and we go and we live the wildlife. Hunting is not necessarily what I do, but rather who I am. 
I've never known it any other way, and Lord willing, I never will. I travel pretty much extensively all over the United States and the world for that matter, hunting, and I do so year after year after year after year, and I can't imagine it any other way. Just because I speak my mind, don't make me a jerk, hey, that's the truth. Just my point of view. I think for a lot of people hunting, it's, it's getting out in the open and getting to be, you know, in the, in the beautiful, peaceful country and, and just enjoying nature at its finest. Um, but on my elk hunt, in an RV, two cameramen, two guides, a husband, and two dogs. Yeah, if you don't like me, then I probably won't like you. I would hope that at some point we could somehow or another get an RV to do most of the hunting out of. And I thought we were going to have World War III. We woke up and the weather is a little bit cooler today, overcast. Maybe this will get the elk up and moving. We're not sure of the weather. We're not sure what we're going to what we're going to run into, but we head out with high hopes that we'll see something and we won't get drenched in the meantime. We were glassing a canyon and we heard a bugle the opposite direction. So we kind of maneuvered around a little bit and got to where we could glass him and look at him. And I think Bridger and I actually said almost at the same time, that's a big bull. That's a big bull. I can't tell exactly, but he's got these wide. I was so like taken aback because the guides were like, ah, you know, I don't know. I don't think he's big enough. And I'm like, I'm going to pull the trigger right now. And, and Dan walks up and Dan's like, shoot him. <laughs> he's big enough to shoot. Let's kill him. Is he? Yes. And finally, everybody got excited. They're like, OK, this is the one. Let's take him. We could see him moving through the brush, but we never could get a clear eye at him. We kept stalking a little closer, and we bugle him, and we'd try and get him to come out, and we'd get a little closer, and we'd cow call and try and get him to come out, and he just wouldn't respond to anything. Well, as we were moving closer and closer toward this, this big bull, after we'd made the call to go after him, there always seems to be this one little guy or younger bull that we have to maneuver around to make sure we don't let him wind us so he doesn't start barking. Of course, if an elk barks, and every elk within four counties is going to be gone. There he is right there. He just answered, don't move, don't move. Let's go. It's always been remarkable to me how cool, calm, and collected Stephanie can be throughout the whole process until she is successful. And I, and I don't think that's something that she's practiced. That's just something that you've got inside. You either have it or you don't. She's definitely got ice water in her veins and it helps a lot in these circumstances. You know, we finally get to where we think we're relatively close and Bridger hits that cow call. And that bull steps out from behind a tree. It's not presenting a shot opportunity and as normal, you know, camera can't see it. We scurried over and got him to position. Rick, when he, Rick, when he clears, are you ready? Yep, when he OK, so Stephanie, wait until he clears, OK? My heart was pounding. It, this is the biggest animal I've ever seen in my life. And I, I was so excited to take this elk. And I was just, you know, I was trying to do everything I could do to keep my composure and keep steady on the gun and, and just you know, not let my adrenaline get the best of me. Just let him keep coming. Wait, he's coming right at us. He's coming. Just let him keep coming. That's good footage. Are you on him, Rick? Yeah, but all I got is horns. All he's got is horns. You don't have a clear shot, do you, Steph? Okay, then don't shoot. Okay, there's a cow going to the right. Yeah. He's gonna follow her. That's okay, I'm gonna slow him down, okay? Stephanie, tell me when he's clear. Load, load. Put it on him. 
I always want it to be ethical. I want it to be quick. I don't want him to suffer. And, you know, I had to shoot him again. So I racked another one and got in a good position and I took another shot and this, this one did the trick. I still couldn't see him, so I wasn't for sure he's down. I had to, you know, stalk him a little bit closer and man, when I found out he was down the ground and it was it was done, I was so excited. I just I couldn't believe walking up to him and seeing how big and how massive that animal was. He was huge. Wild stuff. <laughs> I think this was a typical elk hunt hunting with tri-state outfitters. The elk bugled, they came to the calls. I, I cannot envision how an elk hunt could go any better and I've elk hunted in a lot of places for a lot of years. No matter how tight the quarters are, no matter where we are in the middle of the world, I could be anywhere with Dan hunting. There's, it's my life and I love it. I wouldn't trade it for the world.